Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowland. It's howdy doody time. No, it's Smith and Rowland time. Smith and Rowland time. It is Smith and Rowland casting of pods time. Howdy doody time. And uh, so we are gathered here to do a little bit of a different type of a podcast. Oh, are we? Oh, today. we're different today. Thanks for giving me a heads up. Well, uh, anytime. Yeah. I mean, it needs to be said that uh, I have some <laughs> superior technological uh, <laughs> things <laughs> about me. Superior. And, you know, I was <laughs> laying off sharing it. I didn't want to just blurt it out. Well, I mean, you didn't want to, but, but you know, uh, you it's just, just had something to. that I had to do. Yeah, I felt yeah. like it was necessary you that sound I like share. Some of these uh, other podcasters. Go ahead. And, and uh, well, well, let me just put it this way no. I really didn't want to do this video. <laughs> <laughs> that just runs up my back. But I don't know what it is, but it I, I felt like I needed to address the situation. Didn't you always like to hear a preacher say, I didn't really want to preach this message? I didn't want to preach this message. How many times have you said that? And can I tell you something? Every time I said it, I wanted to puke on myself. Because <laughs> I was actually dying to preach that message. <laughs> you, you know where to start your message off with a lie. That's that exactly. don't work good. Hey, we're going to do a topic show today. Topic. Let's do it. And, and well, that's probably not the right way of putting it. We're going to answer some questions. Okay. Because, watch, we're getting we're not getting ca- uh, getting caught up on our fan mail. That's true. That's true. And it comes so in all the time. They come, yeah. So we're going to be answering some uh, questions that have has come in. Cool. On our Smith and Roland YouTube channel, mm-hmm. you can find even larger versions of the answers to these questions by joining Kingdom Prophetic Society dot mm-hmm. org. That is Kingdom Prophetic Society dot org. There is a wealth of information on there, but we're going to be answering some questions while I show off the brilliance of my technological <laughs> advancements. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, well, you, I graduated from like you, Tech University uh, with honors, by the way, <laughs> on the dean's list. Oh but at the end of this uh, podcast, you uh, when you see all of the <laughs> technological advancements that I will be making, <laughs> I, I just I'm hoping Elon don't call and want there, me to do. You know what I'm saying? You got that to deal with. I'll That's do. why I've been trying to hide it like under a bushel. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, under a bushel. All right. All right, all right well, so well. question number one. Okay. You ready for this? But I haven't Mr. seen anything te- technological yet. Oh, it's when, coming. Oh, okay. It's okay. coming. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Pose this question to you and see what you all what right. you think about it. How will all of the missing Christians be explained after the rapture? What saith you, Mr. Smith? Well, I think that what will happen, you know, this conspiracy theory uh, uh, group will start saying that uh, if everybody that's had to jab, all suddenly they disintegrated. That's that's one view. (laughs) That's one view. Another view, <laughs> I don't know where that one came from, Just it must have been something. Uh, I think what will happen at the rapture of the church, I think that there's going to be one one of two things. One is, I think it's going to be so much chaos already starting on the earth, it's going to just kind of be a blip. I think they're going to, I think it's going to be chaos, but I, don't think, I think it's going to be short-lived because you're going to have the beginning of these, of greater times of trouble. And you, you and I both, you know, are pre-trib, uh, but the truth is, we you might could scoot it over a little bit. We're not sure, but we're hanging <laughs> on to pre-trib. But still, the, the, there's some days and there's a little goosey. <laughs> it could go either way a little yeah. bit. And so, uh, but our stance is pre-trib. But how can it be explained? Number one, there will be a good answer to explain it. Trust me. Probably more like alien uh, abduction type conversations will be taking place i think in in the let in let the me news. just let me just say as i wrote the question down mm-hmm. i put down underneath it alien abduction oh, did you okay and one reason i did that is because if you think about it the world now watch first first let's let's qualify it this mm-hmm. way that sounds ludicrous and crazy to some people 
mm-hmm. to think that alien abduction would be used as an explanation, let's mm-hmm. just say. However, with E.T. phone home, close encounters of the third kind, Hollywood's been laying the, the, the groundwork mm-hmm. for this mm-hmm. for years. Now you have Senate hearings that has right documented now. and validated That's happened. the existence of UFOs. Mm-hmm. And the closest thing to a good lie, or the best thing about a good lie, is it's close to the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, just consider that alien abduction or an abduction from an extraterrestrial being out of our time domain mm-hmm. is exactly what's going to happen at the rapture. That's right. That is the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so a truth can be spoken yet with the wrong intent behind the truth. Mm -hmm. They're not going to attribute it to Jesus being Mm -hmm. the one that that takes us out, but they could attribute it to extraterrestrial beings Mm -hmm. removing from the earth those that are holding everybody back from a utopian society. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And and I do do think that that's going to play into it. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, you mentioned that we're pre-trib. Mm-hmm. So I would ask you, because we have comments on our YouTube channel, right. because we've made such um, uh, ludicrous and bizarre uh, statements. statements such as that we are pre-trib rapture, what, what leads you in the scriptures to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture okay. of the church? Well, can I ask you a question right before I answer that question? It's always, you know, in Left Behind series and different movies and different <clears> things that when it portrays the the rapture the church takes place and this has always bothered me because they'll show in the movie the rapture took place and a car will run into a pole and airplanes fall out of the sky and all these different things happening but that's not what bothered me what always bothered me they'd show a clip of the rapture then you'd have shoes there and their clothes and all their all their all their clothes and everything's left there and i just do we leave here naked that's my question to you, Mr. Rowland. <laughs> I don't think that that's what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I just, I just, um, I mean, I have my own thoughts, but I want to do well, yeah, first. I, we get into somewhat theoretical territory. Mm-hmm. There's some of this that's not answered directly in the Word of God. But you know so what I'm saying. I do know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily believe. Now, I've even heard this preached. I've heard some preachers <clears> say. That our clothes is going to be like the grave clothes of the Lord, folded and setting nicely in a place. Mm, I've heard that. I, I think that uh, that it vanishes. I mm. think it vanishes, and I'm not too far away from believing that the rapture of the church could coincide with some kind of cataclysmic, warlike nuclear mm. event that could also play into the explanation as to why all these people are missing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we just come through a horrible hurricane, mm-hmm. and there's hundreds of people that were missing. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They're thinking just gone. Thinking you know? even more than that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so the dis, uh, the explanation of that um, plays into what we're talking about. But I don't think that no clothes are left behind. I, I'm even unsure, and un, I'm not really convinced okay you know airplanes falling from the sky cars crashing maybe Mm -hmm. but the power the supernatural power of our lord could call the church out and and land every plane and stop every car Mm -hmm. he i mean it's not like that that has to happen that way is what i'm Mm -hmm. what i'm driving at that mass confusion that everybody has in their mind may not necessarily happen that way. We're not told that in Scripture. Mm -hmm. What we are told is the Lord is going to descend from heaven with a shout, the voice Mm -hmm. of the archangel. The dead are going to rise. Mm -hmm. Okay, explain. Everybody says explain the open. How are you going to explain all these opened graves? Well, Mm -hmm. you could do that similarly with Mm -hmm. alien-type activity. But what, what makes us think that, they're not going to float through the ground. Those bones are not going to float through mm-hmm. the ground and rise up to meet their new body. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know that. I think I think that uh, we ha- have to seriously think through the supernatural power and the supernatural events of our Lord to come to th- 
a, a conclusion like that. Mm-hmm. So to not believe in a pre-tribulation rapture based off of the chaos that is in our minds that it may bring to the earth, that chaos may on, may exist before then. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. And just like you say, it could coexist with something, with a disaster that's just beginning. Because we know we are going to be jerked out right before that wrath begins. And we know the first three and a half is not as bad as the second three and a half. But still, I got a feeling that a mild case of God's wrath is not good. You know, in the first three and a half. uh, uh, The first three and a half years. And then if you have this... uh, so. We know that it's, I tend to believe that the rapture of the church is going to be uh, five minutes before it starts. I think it, because I think it's going to shock the world. I, th- I don't think the rapture is going, the church is going to happen and not many people know it. I think it's designed to shock the world. Something just happened. And I believe, even though they're going to say, give all of these other reasons on what's happened, I believe the greatest news on the street is going to be the rapture just happened, and we missed it. Very well could be. I think that's be. going to be the biggest word on the street. Very, because, very well could be. Because there's something supposed to shake humanity. See, the rapture is supposed to shake humanity, just like the tribulation is to— I think the rapture of the church will shake, it will shake the Gentiles, and I think that the tribulation uh, will shake the Jews. Yeah, I believe that. I, 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 I believe that as well. Mm. Let me also say— far as a pre-tribulation rapture goes. Mm-hmm. The reason I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture is because of the way the book of Revelation is laid out. Mm-hmm. And we've discussed this many times. Of course. you got chapter 1 where John receives a vision of the glorified Christ. Chapters 2 and 3, um, the church age. Mm-hmm. And then when chapter 4, verse 1 starts, it says he was called up mm-hmm. by the Spirit Mm-hmm. after these things to show him things that will be here after. And the question is, after what? And the mm-hmm. answer is, after the church of chapter 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. Church is not mentioned anymore till mm-hmm. you get to chapter 19. So the book of Revelation lays it out in such a way that it's undeniable that the rapture mm-hmm. takes place. Then you enter into this time of tribulation mm-hmm. that is described vividly in, in chapter 6 through 19, and which coincides with Old Testament prophecies. It does. Uh, so that's that's why that's one reason why I'm pre-tribulation rapture. I'm not. That's not the only reason, but that's that's one reason why is because of the layout of the Book of Revelation. Now that doesn't mean that because I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church that I can't fellowship with those that hold to a different timing of the rapture. Mm-hmm. And I would like for you to speak to that. Our relationship and our friendship is not based with other believers on the timing of the rapture because we have some friends, uh, Jeff, that do not even uh, think that the rapture is a true event uh, because of the uh, they spiritualize everything, make allegories, and because if you're into replacement theology, if you believe in the rapture, you believe it already happened somewhere between 70 and 90. AD, but uh, so the but the rapture. What do I think? I, here's what I think: just because you believe something wrong doesn't mean uh, that it's not going to happen, and it also doesn't mean that you're going to fall out of relationship with God. And I'll tell you why. Even though a lot of people think it is, if you don't agree with me on the rapture of the church, or if it's if pre mid post, or it's not even going to happen, a lot of people hang a lot of. Uh, relational ties, kind of. yeah, yeah, ties. Uh, I was looking for another word, but um, on agreeing on uh, the theology and the eschatology, uh, we're of the persuasion that what unites us into the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, is our confession of Jesus and Him on the cross, death, burial, resurrection. Uh, and so I think that that's um, I can totally sympathize with somebody that doesn't see the rapture of the church. I, I can sympathize with those people, hmm. and I can even allow for myself uh, to be wrong in some areas. I, I really can. Uh, but once you get the revelation of it, the best thing I can do is just sympathize with those that don't have the revelation, because once you see it. 
and I know a lot of people can make the same claim, Jeff. Now, my as far as being friends and in uh, fellowship with each other, I ain't got anything to do with it. And uh, but at the same time, I think <clears throat> that um, I, can, I just can't see it any other way because I've seen the revelation yeah. of this mystery of the rep, rapture of the church. Yeah. And what does concern me somewhat is if it's not taught, it's lost. Any truth that's not taught is lost. And in a lot of circles today, in replacement theology camps and uh, dominionism camps, uh, they don't believe in the, in the rapture of the church or they believe it's already happened. So anyway, I, I don't know that I really answered your question no, you well, did. but yeah. I, I don't want you to see the... Once you see the you truth, see the whole the book truth. harmonizes to me. It, it that one, it sounds like a little thing, but like you just said, it harmonizes the whole book. It absolutely does. It substantiates the truth of other um, information that God's given in His Word, yeah. and just ties it. It has to be true. Yeah, it does because it totally follows the the character of God and. And as we've said before, we know a lot of people say, well, you just believe in the escapism theology. And you and I have always made the argument, yeah, yes, we are. And yeah. We want to escape hell. That's right. We want to escape the wrath of yeah. God. We want to escape temptation. Es- escape, uh, yeah. It's yeah. Bible. Yeah, we're into escape. not your boy. And so, um, but a lot of people, they say, well, well, we don't think that if everybody else is not going to ex- be able to escape tribulation, we don't think the church should be able either. Well, I mean, it's a, I'm just glad you're not God's all I can say. Yeah, boy. Yeah, but is that not a kind of a prideful statement? I think so. To think yeah. that, well, you're going to be a martyr uh, for Jesus uh, through the tribulation period. Yeah. And I think we need to be careful with such statements at that. I, I worry about that because um, for this reason, how can it, how could it be described as the blessed hope if our hope is that we're going to endure the wrath of God being poured out upon the earth mm-hmm. in the in the way that it's 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 worded in the Book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. I, I, how could that be called the blessed hope? And bless and bless Israel's little heart. You know, a lot of people are thinking, "Well, boy, I, I wish God would have called us the chosen people." I I think I'd back up on that one. If you're if you're in that number that when God uh, started with Abraham and he had this idea, he's going to bless the earth. Uh, through the Hebrews, and they're God's chosen people, but, I mean, they are, but they've lived in and out of, through hell, through the ages. Uh, the last 2,000 years, it's just been hell upon earth or for the Jewish nation, but yet God counted them worthy to be the expression of his heart and his truth and his grace and his mercy, and he also used them as a show and tell. Here's what you people act like. Look at the nation Israel. Uh, when you're without me. And so they could be with God historically, and then the next generation would kick God to the curb. Same thing we're seeing happen now within the Christian church, Jeff. And it leads me to the next question. Okay. This was another question in a, uh, in the form of a comment, I think. Are we at the end of time or the beginning of eternity? That was a comment that come in on, our, on the YouTube channel. All right, and, you, and, you answer that. Well, to... Uh, you know, when I when I looked at it right at the beginning, I, I thought, "Are we at the end of the end of time or at the beginning of eternity?" You have to calculate the fact that we're we're not at the end of time. We are at the end of the age, but we're not at the end That's of right. time. That's right. Because we are transitioning into something that is explicitly about time mm-hmm. in the kingdom age. Six times in Revelation chapter twenty. It signifies a thousand year reign six times. Mm-hmm. So that being said, we are not at the end of time, nor of, of even the destruction of the world. Mm-hmm. We are transitioning from the end of this age into another age. And mm-hmm. it, that being said, and I, I started a little introductory teaching why it's not on dispensationalism Mm -hmm. which is basically the way god arranges his plan through ages that's right and and that's so we're we're fixing to go into another age so we're not at the end of time the beginning of eternity is at the end of the kingdom age Mm -hmm. when this earth passes away and there's a new heaven and there's a new earth that's the way that i see it what saith you 
old guru, Alan Smith. Well, there's a, um, I don't know, Jeff. We do notice, as you said, that there are ages. And we've discussed it before, discuss it again, that when Noah built a boat and there was a flood, there was an end of an age and a beginning of another age. And if you believe in the flood, you are dispensational. Wonder show. Absolutely. So because it was the end of one age, the beginning of another and uh, God was changing up some things. He was changing the furniture in the room. He was moving things around. And that's what we, we call an age. In the book of Revelation, at uh, chapters 2 and 3, you mentioned the church age. We are now living in the church age, so we know we are living in chapter 2 and 3 of Revelation. Yeah. And we also know that the age, an age has a beginning and an end. Eternity doesn't. Now, Now, let me share this with you. Anything that's organic has a beginning and an end anything that's spiritual does not mm. the, that's the reason if you're if you die and go to hell it's it's forever because it's spirit yeah anything that's organic has a beginning and an end anything that's spirit and not organic does not have an end and uh, so it's troublesome to us in that well, when you see the end of an age, what changes? Anything that's organic, it'll have an end at, well, the, at the end of that age. But then anything that spirit does not. So we come back with him. We'll be here a thousand year reign. Then we'll have a new heaven and a new earth. Uh, we'll be already operating in spirit, which which eternity. I, I don't know if we can say... If eternity doesn't have an end, Jeff, it can't have a beginning. Because it would would it not defy the very word eternity? Mm-hmm. I mean, eternity is like God. It just always has been. And so that's the reason the Bible has to discuss things in ages. This is the reason that God had to do things in dispensation. And when he talks about the dispensations and in, in the end, when God pours out things, it tends it, it has a spiritual connotation, perhaps, but yet it's that that's organic as beginning and an end. You see, and that's just yeah. like me and you. Our bodies are organic, so it's got a beginning and an end. But our spirits, now this is a question. Can I get off topic one little itchy-bitchy second here? Did our spirits, since we have a spirit, has it always been eternal? Or did we just get a new spirit issued at the time that we were birthed upon this earth? You know, Mr. Rowland. Oh, this is a question you're posing to <laughs> this me. Is, yeah, this is one. If I was putting, yeah, I'm posing this question to you. And, and it's just, I'm not saying we can prove anything, but it, it I know that etern- we speak about eternity and speak about spirit. It doesn't have a beginning or end. And then we have a spirit. So were we sitting up in heaven? God said, hey, I want to send a load to the earth, and we uh, kind of raised our hands. Oh, yeah, me next. Or yeah. something. I mean, I'm not sure. Let me uh, let me say, I, in some ways, I've been addressing that in the teachings on Friday night cool. in the book of Revelation. Now, I have a thought. This I'm not saying that everybody's going to agree Here's with this thought, thought That's but, all right. you know. Throw it at us. There is, there is a difference in the word between the word eternal uh-huh. and everlasting. So Jesus said he's given to us eternal life. Mm-hmm. Eternity to mean to it has no beginning, it has no end. Mm-hmm. Everlasting mm-hmm. has no end. Mm-hmm. So we've been given given eternal life, and he's also said we've been given everlasting yes, life. Mm-hmm. So we we both we have both to uh, to agree with the scriptures. The Bible says he chose us in him before the foundation of the world what it says i i have this belief that we are eternal in that we were in the heart of god already in his mind and in his heart before we were placed on the earth Mm -hmm. he could not have chose us before we were had we not been somewhere Mm -hmm. i believe we were in his heart Mm -hmm. we were in his mind the expression of who we are that is manifested through our soul, I think, 
was the an expression of God mm-hmm. in, in, with a, re, a, a regenerated spirit mm-hmm. in eternity past. We're placed into time with the choice to choose the Lord upon his choosing of us. Mm-hmm. Our destiny is settled in his heart. But I believe I do believe still believe we have to choose that destiny. Mm-hmm. But to answer that question, I think that we were in the heart of God before the foundation of the world, placed into time, spirit man coming alive unto everlasting life. Mm-hmm. That's the way I, I perceive it in my mind. And the only way that I can find agreement with what is said, concerning the foreknowledge of God and the predestination, the doctrine of predestination, Mm -hmm. and how he chose us in him, in -hmm. himself, before the foundation of the world. How does that strike you? Well, I'll get get it. Let me give you an example and see if I'm following you right here. So what you're saying is I'm 71, you're 60. One. 61. I'm 71. So that means that God thought of me before he did you. I mean, that's the only conclusion. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's the only thing I can. Uh, what do you think? Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, he has you know, I mean, I just proved the rails. It. Well, no, I just, used, I just proved it. His God, rails got God, sideways. God thought about me before he did you. That's all. The, well, the thing is, in eternity, there's no time. Mm-hmm. I knew you were so going to do the you time knew thing. that uh, yeah right <laughs> so basically we were in him at the same moment in eternity that we cannot have the dimension of because we are limited. <laughs> oh, I'll let you be of equal buddy. status with me. It's okay. I'll let let's you move to another question okay, because we got several. I don't know. If we're gonna have time. We're not yeah, gonna have time. Yeah, for we're, this. yeah we're yeah we're yeah we're not ahead. gonna have time for all this. Yes, we are. Go ahead. I know we're not, but go ahead. <laughs> This would be a good one to finish okay. on. We're going to finish on this one. Okay. All right. So we got this comment. Got a comment from our many viewers. Thousands across the globe. That's right. <laughs> and the comment was, nothing supernatural has ever been proven to exist. Therefore, why believe? Throwing it to you, Mr. Smith. Nothing supernatural. Well, I mean, I first thing I would say, I would ask that gentleman or lady, whoever it was, first thing I would say, can you tell me a, of a witness of anything that's unnatural on the planet? And, of course, the answer would have to be yes. I mean... I would think. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're... I mean, the way the morality of the human race today and... and man with man women with women all of, all of that uh, alphabet stuff i can give you easily a proof of the unnatural so if that's unnatural that's uh, if you got supernatural you got natural in the middle and you got unnatural over in the bottom well if, if you got unnatural you got to have supernatural just just out of just out of common reasoning you would have to have that another thing i would say too the very fact that God has created us, including this individual, is proof that he loves us already. The very fact that God created us is proof that he loves us already. The very fact that God created this person that, that gave that, uh, said that statement there, it's obvious that that person has never recognized anything supernatural in their life. This much I can promise you. There has been supernatural things, a lot of things in his life or her life, but they haven't they haven't recognized it. One way that you recognize something supernatural, Jeff, is it's like God gives you one or two gimmies. Yeah. And what I mean by that is once you have the Spirit of God inside of you residing in your heart and life and you've received that, then it's not hard at all to see the supernaturalness of God. It's just not hard. It's just yeah. it's just obvious. If you do not have the Holy Ghost in you to decipher for you what you're looking at, that means you have to go by your own fallen reasoning. And the very pr- problem in the Garden of Eden was that they, uh, Adam and Eve, were removed from the presence of God. And 
then Jesus gave us the provision of the cross that he died our death for us, so now we therefore have can have a relationship again with God. Yeah. So with that relationship, he sends us his spirit. Now, I think it's the spirit that gives us the revelation of being able to decipher this is supernatural, this is not supernatural. But it's like God gives lost man one or two give me's. In other words, something supernatural happened in your life, and you'll say, I don't know how that just happened. And he might even do it too. I'm not going to say he won't do it three Yeah. when God's trying yeah. to pull you in to show you just what a fool you really are. Yeah. Can I just put this part in there? I, I think that um, when I hear somebody say, this has never been proved or this has never been documented, first thing I got, I, I have to go to this. Um, they don't believe what has been documented. The Word right. of God is supernatural. That much we know. Um, and the documentation of the Word of God has been validated in a supernatural way if you read the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is absolutely no way that a book could, be, could have been written over thousands of years That's by right. 40 different authors that harmonizes mm -hmm. and then hidden inside of the text – Mm -hmm. are systematic codes that authenticates its message. In other words, and I've heard Chuck Missler say this many times, the New Testament is in the Old Testament concealed. The Old Testament is in the New Testament revealed. That's right. That's right. And, and those things are authenticated. So to say that uh, nothing supernatural has ever been proven is not, it's not a true statement. Mm-hmm. And then I always go to the book of Romans in chapter 1 where it says even the invisible things. That's right. That's what he says. Of creation are clearly seen. So to make that statement, I would have to also add this to, to the one that made that statement. Normally, they've encountered more supernatural things than most people have. That's why they're making the right. statement. Mm -hmm. And the supernatural things they're encountering is not to their liking. It, it is not to it's not benefiting their agenda in some way or it's created pain in their life. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they're making these comments that uh, this can't be authenticated or, or it can't be proven. I think more closely to the comment he made was demonic activity and angelic activity has, has never been uh, proven to exist. Right. And it's just simply not true if you deny the whole Bible, you have to deny You'd the whole deny Bible mm -hmm. in, in order to make that to make that happen. Um, and, and it just it's it's illogical. Uh, it's it's un, it's unbelievable to me that we're talking about a book that you receive by faith, but it's completely illogical to deny it all mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so there is proof that the, the Bible yes. is true and there is proof that it has been authenticated. Uh, it, and it's foolish to, to think that there is a God who can create all that we see and everyone that walks on this planet, but he cannot send us a message. Mm -hmm. That is, that's ludicrous mm -hmm. and insane to believe. Um, so I don't know if that helps to answer those questions. I think, it does. I think it does. And also, Jeff, I would think that the person who made that statement and I appreciate the statement. I do too. I mean, that's just, I, I that's, really that's where the person is. And that's, that's right. That's cool. I feel sure that that person would say that they believe in the word natural. Yeah. A natural world. What they're saying in me. A material world. Material, yeah. a yeah. natural, material world. And what they're making the statement, they don't have never seen any proof of anything supernatural. Well, the first place you got to start is do you believe in the natural? Yeah. And if the answer is yes, you believe in, in the natural, well, supernatural is, it's like a, supernatural is nothing but like putting a four barrel in the old days yeah. Yeah. You know, on a 390 yeah. uh, Ford engine. Yeah. You know, in, in other words, supernatural means you super it up a little bit. Now, now let me say this, Jeff, the, the supernatural has two speeds. Two speeds. I hope everybody remembers this. The supernatural reason you can't see it is it has two speeds. One is 
slower than the naked eye, and the other one is faster than the naked eye. Yeah. So it just so happens God's created us in a way, and with our eyes and what we can see, we're seeing right in the middle of the supernatural. Slower than the naked eye and faster than the naked eye. Uh, proof, uh, the speed of sound, I can't see that. It's too fast. Right. Uh, proof, right. if you have a child, uh, age uh, was born, I cannot see that child grow. But yeah. I can take a picture at one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, five. I can take pictures at different one-year intervals, and I can say, wow, look at that miracle. Look at the growth. In other words, that did you know that a child growing is a supernatural event? Yeah. I mean, how can some, I mean, you go make one with the, go to Walmart or go to Lowe's and try to say you're going to make it. You can't make one. So the very, the very fact of us growing is a supernatural event. But you got to understand, it moves slower than the naked eye. It's right in front of us all the time. A, a tree, I can plant a tree. And I can go back in five years and say, wow, look at that. Look how much that tree's growing. Did you see it grow? No. This person saying, I've never seen evidence. I'm saying it's around you everywhere. Everywhere. You just got to understand the speeds of the supernatural. And, and anyway. I would say this. I, I, I do want to put this in there. Okay. If you believe in the natural world and you're living in it, so apparently mm-hmm. maybe, you know, that's kind of obvious. And you don't believe in any supernatural evidence or anything mm-hmm. like that, then it leaves you with having to explain where the natural world came from, mm-hmm. and you cannot do that. That's Science right. has never been able to do That's that. Right. They can explain certain elements, but they cannot explain the why. That's right. Uh, I heard John Lennox say this, and it, it, I thought it was revolutionary. He said you can take a scientist who says, explain, if you can ask the scientist, explain this pot of boiling water. Why is this water boiling? Mm-hmm. And the scientist would say, well, the heat is rising. It's agitating the water and causing mm-hmm. it to boil. John Lennox says, well, I can explain why the water is boiling. It's because I want a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you've got two different explanations. I'm saying that if you live in the natural world then you and don't believe in the supernatural mm-hmm. then you're left having to explain where does this natural world where, where come, does from? come from well see, like so the, that in itself becomes uh, an issue <clears throat> it yeah. becomes an issue it's just like the storm we've had and we're going to have to wrap it up we're out of time but this storm we have i think it's an unnatural event no i do too I and, absolutely and, and, do. and we've spoken about that how it's yeah. destruction it killed people yeah. and yada 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 yeah that's not, that's not the plan of God. And a lot of people say, well, God caught No, he didn't. Right. No, I agree. No, it's agree. totally against the character of God. Yeah. That's not what happens there. Anyway, Roland, we are out of time. We're out of time. We're need to we pick have up these several questions. questions. Well, we'll get to them later. Let's do another show and with those we'll questions. Do another, we'll do another one. I think it's wonderful. Bogado. Enjoyed it. Okay, buddy. All right, bye. Thank you for joining today's Smith & Rowland Show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrollinshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.